Hi, everyone. I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA, but my specialty is working with QuickBooks for small businesses. In this session, you're going to learn how to use QuickBooks Online for resellers. My email's on the screen, so if you have any questions or anything I didn't cover during the presentation, go ahead and email me and I'll try to point you in the right direction. And I'd like to start by defining some terms, uh, by defining the difference between a reseller and an e-commerce business. So typically a reseller would be anyone that's engaged in going out there to flea markets, to garage sales, to liquidation sales, fire sales, and going out there and buying uh, individual products and goods that are identified to be worth more out there in the real world versus what they're selling it for or what you're finding it um, available for. Now, sometimes resellers will sell in person. Sometimes they will sell uh, online. And, and, and within the context of this uh, of this training, we're going to make the assumption that most of these things are happening online because online is a much larger marketplace. But of course, many resellers go to flea markets and other places and are able to sell the products in retail. Now, typically resellers will buy unique products that do not sell with frequency quite a bit. And um, they're engaged in sort of finding treasures rather than having a particular type of product that they sell over and over and over. I have a client that sells uh, rare shoes and unique shoes and ends up ha uh, finding very unique shoes. But for the most part, they don't really repeat that much, especially because you got different sizes, different years, years they get released, that sort of thing. Now, some resellers will uh, engage in inventory management. They will actually manage, control, track the inventory, and some will not. Typically, it depends on the volume and their level of sophistication with using inventory systems. Now, on the other side of the spectrum would be your e-commerce business. E-commerce business will typically have a digital storefront with a shopping cart like Shopify, WooCommerce, um, big commerce, those type of platforms, and or because sometimes it's both, sometimes it's either or, they will also sell their products in major platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, that sort of thing. Now, typically, an e-commerce business will sell the same type of product over and over and over. So there is recurring or repeat sales, which means that they're always buying inventory ahead of time. And most inventory, I mean, e-commerce businesses will have to track inventory in order to survive. If you're watching this lesson, I suspect that you might be somewhere between reseller and e-commerce. And even if you're just in the reseller side or just getting started, most resellers that I know aspire to become a full-blown, full-time e-commerce business. For the context of this training, we're going to be focusing on the smaller startup reseller type of uh, businesses. However, I do understand that there's tons of opportunity to give you training for the more sophisticated and bigger e-commerce businesses. That is what I do for a living. I help e-commerce businesses with a lot of volume set up their accounting systems. Great. Let's jump right into the table of contents. So we're going to basically split up this training into four parts. We've already done the introduction. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to help you navigate the world of QuickBooks. QuickBooks is a sort of a loose term used to describe many products inside of um, the QuickBooks world or the accounting world. So we're going to explain to you a little bit about the differences between all the products. And then we're going to move on to my recommendation. So what my focus is going to be on this training is specifically showing you the one I'm going to recommend. I won't spoil it. We're going to get there in a minute. Then we're going to talk about how to set up a brand new account. So I'm going to take you through the new account setup process. And then lastly, we'll do a couple of examples of several transactions with inventory management and non-inventory management. So you can kind of picture what it would be like for you to manage your purchases and your sales using QuickBooks Online so you understand what your sales look like, what your profits look like, and you run your business uh, the best, most optimized way possible. Okay, multiple versions of QuickBooks. So if you were to Google QuickBooks or go to the QuickBooks website, you're going to see tons of different versions of QuickBooks. You're going to see QuickBooks Self-Employed. You're going to see QuickBooks Online Simple Start. You're going to see QuickBooks Online Essentials. If you hear any of those three or you see any of those three, keep in mind that none of those three 
self-employed, simple start and essentials, none of them allow you to manage inventory, which means you will never be able to track your profit by product or profit by item or profit by item category if you group your items in particular categories. Now, there are other products that do support inventory, such as QuickBooks Online Plus, QuickBooks Online Advanced, QuickBooks Desktop Pro, Premier, or Enterprise. There's actually three uh, different versions of QuickBooks Desktop for PC. And there's also QuickBooks Desktop for Mac. So when you hear the word QuickBooks, it may mean any of these things. And in the slide, you get to see the prices and the price ranges. So you sort of get an idea for the context of what these things could cost. The most expensive version of QuickBooks would be QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Hosted, which could get all the way to $30,000 with a 30-user hosted license. The least expensive version of QuickBooks will be QuickBooks Self-Employed for $15 a month. Again, it doesn't allow you to manage inventory. QuickBooks Online Simple Start and Essentials will not allow you to manage inventory either. So we're going to go with the least expensive and easiest version to use, which is going to be QuickBooks Online Plus. I'm going to recommend QuickBooks Online Plus for everybody in this training. However, your circumstances could be unique and there might be situations in which you might need to have a different uh, version. Uh, I do want to make sure that I do compare QuickBooks Desktop with QuickBooks Online really quick for sort of the smaller resellers. There are many, many clients that I have that use QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Desktop for Mac or QuickBooks Desktop Premier. The reality is QuickBooks Desktop for Mac and QuickBooks Desktop Premier are better platforms for inventory management. The problem is that they physically have to be installed in a computer. And if you're on the go and you're using uh, an iPad or an iPhone or smartphone um, and you want to access your, your books from anywhere, it becomes a little bit harder with the desktop versions, which is why I think for most resellers, because it does have the basic inventory that you need, QuickBooks Online Plus for 80 bucks a month might be the best uh, deal. Now, for resellers that do over a million dollars in annual sales, and that's not a hard and fast rule, like it could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more, they typically look at either QuickBooks Online Advance and even add on an inventory app to QuickBooks Online Advance. That's going to be at least $180 a month in cost. Or they look at QuickBooks uh, Desktop Enterprise, which the software by itself could be anywhere between $1,700 and $7,700 a month, but it's desktop software. So you have to put it in the cloud if you want the data to be accessible from anywhere with an internet connection. And that could cost you an additional $50, $60 per user to have your QuickBooks Enterprise on the cloud, which is how it could get all the way to $30,000 a year, potentially. Now, if you really want to geek out about the different versions of QuickBooks and what they do, click on the link right there in my slides. I have this huge spreadsheet that goes in detail, feature by feature, the difference across all the versions of QuickBooks Online. I don't want to bore you with that stuff, but in my world, in the QuickBooks consulting world, that spreadsheet is actually gold. So if you do want to do a little bit more detailed research about which version of QuickBooks could work best for you, definitely check out that spreadsheet. However, long story short, I am going to make the strong recommendation to look at QuickBooks Online Plus. And if you use the link that's in the slides, you will get a 30% discount for 12 months. Yes, that's an affiliate link. That means I get paid if you sign up through there. But I welcome to go out there and search for any deal, anywhere else, any coupon, uh, this is going to be the best deal. So even though I get paid for this, I am recommending this because it's the best deal you can get, 30% for 12 months. I want to add one more thing. If you do want to go with QuickBooks Online and you're not ready to manage inventory, that's okay. You don't have to start in QuickBooks Online Plus right away. You can start with QuickBooks Online Simple Start or Essentials, which is $25 or $50 a month, and the same link would also give you 30% discount for 12 months in either version. So I'm going to be focused on the inventory portion. So you're going to need QuickBooks Online Plus for that. But if you're not ready for inventory, and I'm going to do some examples of non-inventory, you can look at Simple Start and Essentials as well. Okay, let's talk about why QuickBooks Online. And I want to just kind of bring it back to why am I making this recommendation without even knowing 
what your business is all about. By the way, if I get a chance to understand your business, maybe I can individually make recommendations. But for the most part, I can make a blanket recommendation because QuickBooks Online is the easiest to use. Uh, the learning curve to learning how to use QuickBooks Online is a couple of weeks to a couple of months, where the learning curve for QuickBooks Desktop is a couple of years for sure. That has been proven and measured, and I've been doing this for long enough to tell you QuickBooks Online, it's easier to use. People will grasp the concept a lot easier. It's 100% cloud-based, accessible from anywhere with an internet access. It works in a PC, Mac, smartphone, tablet, Chromebook. Your version of QuickBooks Online, that's online, you can access from any device, and there's no sort of um, device drama, right, where it needs to be this particular computer or that particular computer. I find that to be com just really, really um, advantageous. Uh, there's tons of free sources in YouTube. If you go to YouTube and search QuickBooks Online, you're going to see hundreds, if not thousands of video tutorials about it. And most importantly for resellers and for e-commerce type business, there's a, there, there are free e-commerce platform integration tools into it. The makers of QuickBooks, they bought a company called OneSaaS. Now, OneSaaS is a connector that allows you to download the transactions straight from Amazon, eBay, Shopify, WooCommerce, Etsy. There's about 14 different platforms that one SaaS can connect with, and they're free for QuickBooks online users. You can download that information straight into QuickBooks and prevent some potential duplicate data entry. If you go with QuickBooks Desktop, the PC version, the Mac version, you can't even add apps to it. But if you go with a PC version of QuickBooks Desktop, uh, QuickBooks Desktop Pro, Premier, or Enterprise, you have to pay for integration into platforms. And sometimes that could be $100 to $300. So if you're a really large e-commerce company and you're using QuickBooks Desktop, you completely justify paying a couple hundred dollars a month to bring that data into your QuickBooks Desktop. But for most smaller e-commerce and smaller resellers that are using these platforms that you see in the screen, the major ones anyway, Amazon, eBay, Shopify, Etsy, WooCommerce, that sort of thing. If you're using any of those and only those, you can use the free integration um, apps that are out there to bring the data in and really, really reduce the amount of data entry you will ultimately do. Now, last resource here, I'll plug. If you click on the link that's on the slides, you can download about a 240 page PDF guide, which is a complete manual on how to use QuickBooks Online. Um, accountants get access to this manual so they can give it to the clients and we can train our clients, um, allowing you to just go out there, click on buy now, there's no charge, and you will get an email, you'll be able to download it, have it in your computer. It's the only official manual that's out there for QuickBooks Online in PDF. So go ahead and check that out, it's free, it won't cost you anything, there's no catch. Um, you, know, you don't need to go to Amazon or, or eBay or whatever and go buy a book. That 240 page guide should be sufficient to get you cover with most, most of your QuickBooks Online questions. Okay, let's jump right into QuickBooks Online and we're gonna start by creating a new account from scratch. All right, as I recommended earlier, if you're gonna create a brand new QuickBooks Online from scratch, you definitely wanna use the link that's in the slides so you can get that 30% discount for uh, the first 12 months. Once you log in into your QuickBooks Online uh, page, you're gonna go all the way down to where the prices are and this is where you get your choices. Simple start, essentials, plus, or advanced. Feel, um, feel free to take a look at all the different feature sets that you get for each one. As I mentioned earlier, plus is the only one that does inventory. So we're going to get started with plus so we can do a couple of inventory examples. I'm going to go ahead and click on try it for free. And then I'm going to enter my email, my phone number, and the password so I can create the account. Then I wanna click on sign up with email. And I do wanna make a quick distinction here. If you get an error while you're setting up the account, uh, because maybe the email's already used, make sure you click on where it says sign in, and then you can try to reset the password and sign in with your existing ID, because it is possible that maybe you created a QuickBooks username and password at some point in the past. And if you don't have a different email and you wanna use that email address, you definitely can use the sign-in feature and reset the password to do that. That happens to a lot of people when they've, at some point in the past, have created an Intuit ID. Okay, so after you create the account, 
you're going to see a whole bunch of screens pop up and it's going to ask you several questions during the setup process. I'm going to walk you through it. It is possible that when you're doing it, the questions might be a little bit different or slightly different order just because QuickBooks decides to change the order of these things, but you, you get a general idea for all the things that you have to answer. So right now I'm just going to click on next because there's really no decisions to make at that point. And then we're going to give the company a business name. So I'm going to call it Hector's Reseller Shop LLC. And then it asked me whether or not I want to move from QuickBooks Desktop since I'm starting from scratch and I don't have QuickBooks Desktop. I'm not going to put the check mark and then I'll just click on next. And then under industry, I'm just going to type uh, retail, something like other miscellaneous retail stores, something like that. It really doesn't matter. Like this decision is not going to hurt you if you pick the wrong thing. This is just like general information for QuickBooks to have so they can try to guide you through the process. That option is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Then it says, what kind of business is this? And at this point, you might need to contact your accountant and find out if you have a formal partnership or S Corp or C Corp. You can always put, I'm not sure. And you can answer that stuff later. Again, it's not really a big deal. Um, if you answer this wrong or don't, or, or don't put anything there, it's just trying to guide you to the setup process. I'm going to click on next. Then it says, do you provide services? Do you sell products or something else? In this case, we sell products as the example that we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Then it says, what is your role? So they're talking about you, the person setting this up. I'm just going to put that on the owner or the partner of the business and then click on next. Next question is, do you have employees? Are you working by yourself? You could choose whatever makes most sense for you. I'm just going to put I fly solo for now and then click on next. And then it's telling you, hey, if you are using any of these platforms, PayPal, Square, Bill.com, Shopify, Dext, go ahead and click on them so we can guide you through the integration process. For the time being, in order to avoid any confusion, I'm going to click skip for now because you can do those integrations later on. Then it says, I want to set up my QuickBooks right away or do I want to explore QuickBooks before I set up? So it's really up to you. I'm just going to click on skip for now. So it doesn't ask me so many questions. And then the next question is, would you like to link or connect your bank accounts? Usually that's a great idea, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to skip for now again, because we can do this later on. I'm going to click on skip for now. Then it says, do you want to set up your invoices for your customers or your bills? I'm going to skip for now. And again, when you're doing this on your own, you can pick and you can follow the prompts however you want. I'm going to click skip for now one more time. And we're just going to let the setup begin. Again, it's okay if you skip these things. All those things that it's asking you about, you'll be able to change them later. I'm going to go ahead and click on Let's Go. And that's going to take me into the initial QuickBooks Online screen. Once it's finished loading up, you're going to see um, in the main page, you're going to see sort of a workflow of the typical uh, phase in which people use to uh, enter accounting transactions. For example, money in. First, we add a product or a service. Then we create a customer. Then we create an estimate. Then we create an invoice. Then we receive a payment. That would be like a typical retail sort of environment, right? In e-commerce, we wouldn't be doing an estimate. We probably wouldn't be tracking sales by customer. We would just be bringing in the invoices or the payments and the sales receipts straight from an e-commerce platform. So it really depends how you're managing your business. On the money out part, we have the ability to pay bills, track time, and eventually manage payroll. If you have employees, you can add payroll to this. For, the, for this example, we're going to ignore payroll. We're going to assume that there is no payroll for this example. Okay, we are finally set up with a brand new QuickBooks Online account. I'm going to start by creating a cash account, like a petty cash account, for purchases that I made make in cash. So I'm going to go into the chart of accounts and the multiple ways to get to the chart of accounts. One way is I can click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. And then where it says your company, one of the last options is chart of accounts. I can do that. That will take me straight into the chart of accounts. The first uh, screen just has a big button that says, see your chart of accounts. All they're doing is explaining what this is before you get there. 
because they're making the assumption that you don't understand accounting terms. So I'm going to go a C chart of accounts, and then you're going to see the default chart of accounts that QuickBooks has set up. Now, one thing I want to uh, discuss, the left navigation bar you see here in the screen, that left navigation bar could have two modes. This is called the business view, which has sort of a simpler to understand terms, or at least this is QuickBooks' attempt to make QuickBooks um, easy for small business owners. When you click right there where it says bookkeeping, you can click on that. You're going to see a sort of a separate menu, and then chart of accounts is going to be right there. Now, when you go back into YouTube and watch multiple uh, QuickBooks videos, you will notice that the screens might look different because this left navigation screen that you see there has recently been redesigned in fall of 2021. So if you're watching YouTube content that was recorded prior to that, you're going to see that left navigation bar look very different. If you want to change the way the left navigation bar looks, we're going to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. And then we're going to go to a little link here that says switch to accountant view. Most of the videos, most of the content already exists. Most of the tutorials are in accountant view. So I'm going to switch it to accountant view. That way you're sort of viewing it the same way you might also be viewing other uh, learning tutorials. In the accountant view, if you want to go to the chart of accounts, you click on the accounting button and then you click on chart of accounts. So I just show you a whole bunch of different ways to get to the chart of accounts. Now notice in the chart of accounts, QuickBooks created an account called cash automatically. It just did that for you. If you go into your chart of accounts and you don't see it, you can create your own. You can click on the new button on the top right of the screen, big new, big, I mean big green button, click on new. And then on account type, we're going to click on bank. Even though it's not a physical bank, it is a bank account from the way QuickBooks sees it. And then the account name, we'll, we're going to call this one uh, Petty Cash. I'm sort of simplifying the term here using Petty Cash. And let's assume I don't have any money in my Petty Cash box, envelope, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not going to enter a beginning balance for now. I'm just going to create the Petty Cash account. I'm going to click on Save and Close. And now I have two accounts, Cash and Petty Cash. I'm going to avoid confusion and not have two of them. I'm just going to delete the one that's there now. In the real world, you wouldn't have to do this. I'm doing this just so I can go through the exercise of creating the Petty Cash account because most people will not automatically see a cash account there. Now, you should also add your bank account. If you have a business bank account, you should be adding that. I'm going to click new on the top of the screen, and then I'm going to click on bank. But then this time around, where it says detail type, I'm going to switch that to checking. And then here I'm going to put typically the name of the bank, let's say Chase checking and I like to put the last four digits of the account number so we can make some some sense of it especially if we have multiple business bank accounts and typically when you set up QuickBooks for the first time you have to make the decision on how long you're going to be using QuickBooks in terms of going back in time and filling that information so you can file your tax return from your QuickBooks information so if you have um, had the business for the entire year you probably want to set up the a beginning balance from the beginning of the year. So you click on beginning of the year and then you enter the ending balance for the previous year in your bank account. So you're going to go into your December 31st statement from the previous year. You're going to look at the ending balance and let's say you're going to put the number there. Let's say it's $567.85. That's how much money was in my business bank account. I'm going to click uh, save and close. Why that's important is because we're going to make the assumption that you're going to connect the banks, and maybe download all the transactions and have a full accounting year in your QuickBooks so you can file a proper tax return. So here is this QuickBooks balance. That should be today's balance, but we haven't entered that information yet. So we just entered the beginning balance, so we have a starting point. Now, let's make the assumption that, let's say, January 2nd, we took out $200 in cash from our checking account, and we put it in our petty cash account so we can buy some things for the business. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a transfer. When you click on the new button on the top right of the screen, uh, sorry, on the top left of the screen, we're going to click on the new button. You're going to see one transaction here called transfer. Now we only use transfers to move money from two different bank accounts. If you remember earlier, a cash account, the petty cash account is considered a bank account in the QuickBooks world. So I'm going to transfer from my checking account, from my business checking account into my petty cash account and I'll transfer there $200. And let's say that happened on January 2nd. So 01, 02, 21. 
and then I can put memo. I'm going to put cash for Miami uh, yard sale or whatever, right? Whatever, whatever the purpose of taking the cash out it will be just an internal memo for yourself. That's not an expense. Petty cash is not an expense. It's just a transfer from your bank account into your cash account. And we're going to use a petty cash account to make purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, save and close. And that will complete that transaction. Now you will notice that the $500 I had in my business bank account went down by $367. And now my petty cash account has $200. So let's go ahead and make some purchases. Let's say we go out there in a yard sale and we make a couple of purchases. So the best place to put a purchase in QuickBooks is to go to the new button and then click on expense. That's typically the best way to do it, especially if you're going to pay in cash. If you're going to pay with an actual check, you're going to use the option check. And if you happen to pay with a credit card, with a business credit card, we're going to have to set up a credit card in QuickBooks separately. We're not going to cover that here just for the to respect the time, but uh, you're going to track both transactions in your bank and your credit card. So I'm going to go ahead and click on expense. And let's say I'm going to put in the top left the payee. Who am I buying something from? So you can put the person's name. You can put the person's business. Or you can put anything to identify so you can remember who you bought it or where you bought that from. So I say, for example, I'm going to buy it from this guy named Mark Smith. So I'm going to come here in the payee. I'm going to click on add new. And I should get a pop-up for that. And I'm going to type Mark Smith. Again, you can put a different vendor name as an identifier if you don't happen to know the name of the person you're buying it from. It's just for reference, just for understanding, just for internal controls. Now, if you click on plus details, you can add more information about the person you're buying from. So if you happen to have their phone number, their address, uh, tax ID, whatever, if you happen to have more information, you want to add notes, that sort of thing, you can do that. Or you can just simply just uh, put the vendor name uh, Mark Smith, and that's it, and not have to enter, enter any details. It's really up to you how much details you want to enter. So I'm going to click on Save. That creates the payee, and now I'm going to enter uh, the expense category uh, or the item that I'm buying. Now, I want to make a distinction now. If we're going to track inventory, it's going to be very different if we're uh, versus not tracking inventory. So for the purpose of this, Let's say we are going to track inventory. So I'm going to collapse the category details, and then I'm going to open item details. That allows me to then uh, create items, individual products, either inventory or non-inventory, that I can track for the purposes of understanding what I spent the money on. So let's say, for example, I bought uh, some collector baseball cards uh, from this person, and I don't want to track the baseball cards as inventory. But I also bought, let's say, um, a book, right? A special book that I'm going to resell. And I do want to track the book as inventory. So that will give you a uh, sort of flavor for both. So let me start with the non-inventory baseball card. So I'm going to click on the drop-down menu. Here was this products and services. I'm going to click on add new. And I'm going to create a non-inventory part. Here in the, on the right-hand side, you see that we have inventory as an option. And then we have non-inventory. I said I didn't want to track the baseball cards as inventory, so I'm making them as non-inventory. So I put here baseball cards, okay? I could just have a generic name just like that. Here where it says description, I sell these items to my customers and I purchase these items from vendors. I'm gonna mark those two because that's essentially what I'm doing. On their income account, and we haven't talked about chart of accounts yet, um, you're gonna select the income account that makes the most sense to you. Income accounts could be different buckets in which you're going to track your sales. For now, I'm just going to use an, uh, an account called sales or sales of product income. Either one works. And then for the expense category, I'm going to choose a category under cost of goods sold. And there should be something under cost of goods sold. In this case, I'm just going to select this one called cost of goods sold. So that's simple. We have a sales account for my income, and then we have a cost of goods sold, which is the expense account for this and then we're going to click on save and close and that's simple i created a generic non-inventory item in description i can put 1999 uh cincinnati reds okay and we spell cincinnati but that's okay cincinnati reds uh collection and let's say for example i want to track them by unit 
and I bought I bought them for let's say eighty dollars, and there was twenty seven cards in there, just to um, use an example. So I'm gonna put quantity twenty seven, and then under amount I'm gonna put eighty. I put nothing on the rate. I hit tab, and then it basically calculated what is my cost per unit. Again, I'm not tracking inventory for them, but that can give me a general idea what they cost me per unit in that particular purchase and what I'm going to sell them for in the future. Again, I picked a non-inventory part for this. Let's say I also bought a, a book for them, a very particular book. So I'm going to click on add new, but I do want to track the book as inventory. So I'm going to select inventory as the option. And then I'm going to uh, select 1999 uh, baseball hall of fame book, right? Again, I'm just making these things up. Okay, on their initial quantity, I'm also always going to put zero because I don't never want to enter initial quantities in this screen. And then as of date, I typically just put the beginning of the year. Uh, so 1-1-2021. One, one, um, and I, on the reorder point, I'm going to put zero because I am not expecting to order more of these. These are unique items. Now you notice that income account goes straight to sales or product income. The cost of goods sold account goes straight to cost of goods sold. Inventory asset account goes straight to inventory asset. We're okay with those. Um, we're not going to get into the details in terms of um, how deep we're going to go with these categories. Let's just keep the default ones. On their category, I am going to create categories so I can um, group my items in logical fashion. So I'm going to go to category, click on add new, and I'm just going to put here books. That way, you know, all the books I create, they're going to go into that category or that grouping so I can see them all in there sort of under the same area. So I'm going to click save and close. And let's say I bought uh, one of those products and I spent uh, 15 bucks on it. Uh, and here I can put uh, mint condition 600 page book, whatever description I want to put to just kind of make sense of this. So I, I'm spending a total of $95 uh, dollars on this. Then I'm going to click on uh, save and close. I haven't talked about sales tax yet. We'll do another example with sales tax so we kind of understand what happens if there's sales tax in this situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close and that finishes that transaction. Let's say I went to uh, make another purchase. So I'm gonna go into, uh, back to that transaction. I didn't make a mistake actually, so that's good that I came up. I made a mistake and I used the bank account as the expense uh, source account for that and I actually bought that in cash. So good thing that it happened so I can show you how you go back to a transaction. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass on the top right, and then that will give me a list of all my transactions. I'm going to click on this expense from Mark Smith, click on that, and this was my fault. I didn't show you this, but when you create an expense, you have to select the payment account. You got to make sure you select the correct source account where the money is coming from. So because I bought that in cash, I cannot hit my bank account. I have to hit my petty cash account because I've already transferred $200 from my checking account into my petty cash account, which is basically an envelope with money or my pocket or a safe box or whatever. So I'm going to click on save and close. That way my bank account can go back to the 367 that it was before. And now my petty cash is down to $105. Let's say I make another purchase. So I'm going to go to new and click on expense. And let's say I'm going to buy um, another book and then I'm going to buy, let's say some shoes. So I'm going to go to payee. Let's say I have a different vendor that I'm buying this from. I'm going to go to add new. I'm buying this from uh, Carlos Lopez. And if you don't know the vendor's name, just put the city or the location or the venue just so you can remember who you bought this from. So I'm going to click on save. Let's say that also happened on the second. I'm going to open up the item tab and then I'm going to create, let's say, a new item. So let's say I bought some uh, Michael Jordan Air. Uh, 1998, size 8, male, right? Something like that. So I bought some shoes. Okay, so I'm going to click on add new. Notice I typed it at the beginning. And then I'm going to click on inventory. So it's going to um, bring into the name the same thing that I typed in there. So you can either type or go straight to create new. On the category, I'm going to create a new category. And I'm going to call this shoes. And then click on save. And then for the time being, I'm going to skip any descriptions but descriptions would be useful at some point in time. Initial quantity, that would be zero. As of date, always put sort of the beginning of the year or where you started using QuickBooks, and then zero for reorder point, and then click on save and close. 
So there's my pair of shoes. Let's say I paid uh, $45 for these shoes. And then I can put um, uh, great condition, semi used or whatever you want to put in there. Okay. Uh, and now let's say I also want to buy a book from those people. Let's say I'm going to buy, I don't know, first edition of 1984. So I'm going to type here, uh, George Orwell, 1984, first edition. Let me, miss, let me spell George correctly. Okay, because that would be nice. Then we're going to click on Add New. And then we're going to call Inventory. And then under Category, I'm going to select Books that already exist in there. And I'm going to put, again, we're doing Inventory for this. So Initial Quantity 0, As of Date 01, 01, 2021. This is the part that's a little bit annoying, having to put this initial um, As of Date. Not a big fan of it, but it's there. You got to do it. Let me click Save and Close. And let's say I'm going to pay... Um, Eight dollars for this book, okay? And I spent fifty-three dollars. I'm gonna make sure it comes out for my petty cash account, and then I click on save and close. So that's it. I made two purchases that day. Let's say that I had fifty-two dollars left, um, you know, from my petty cash. I'm gonna spend two dollars, let's say, in a bottle of water, and then I'm gonna fifty put fifty dollars back in the bank account. So how would I do that? Well, I have to enter the water expense. So I'm gonna come come in here and click on expense. And I'm gonna, let's say we're gonna just type a uh, vending machine, something like that. Let's say I don't wanna keep track of like, you know, the name of the vending machine or whatever. Okay, and then under category, notice I'm not using item anymore. I'm gonna put a category called uh, meals. And let's say, because I'm just buying water, so I'll just put here uh, water, and that would be $2. And I'm recording the $2 out of my petty cash account. Click on save and close. And let's say on the next day, on the third, I took the fifty dollars and then I put it back in the bank. So I'm gonna go to new, and then I'm gonna go. I could do transfer, but it might be easier to just do a deposit. So you do bank deposit, and then we're gonna deposit the fifty dollars into the checking account. So we're gonna pick a checking account, and it's gonna be on the third, right? So we're gonna pick the third. Um, uh, so that was a Sunday. Let's do the fourth. That's a that's a, a Monday, and then receive from. That's where. I can put a name, but it doesn't really make any sense because it's just me putting the money back in there. Account is a big important one. Here's where I'm gonna put petty cash. So I can put here, uh, putting money back. Putting cash back or something like that. And then on the amount put 50, and then click on save and close. And that will clear out my petty cash account back to zero. My bank account should be uh, now in $417. What do we want to do at this point? Let's take a look at the reports to see what we have on inventory. So I'm going to click on reports. And then I'm going to click on uh, in the search. I'm just going to type inventory. And I'm going to do an inventory valuation summary, probably the best report to use. Inventory valuation summary. And that's going to take me to a report that shows me I got a pair of shoes for 45 bucks. I got a baseball Hall of Fame book for 15 bucks. I got a George Orwell. Orwell 1984 book for eight bucks. I have a total of $68 in inventory. Now, if I go to reports and I run my balance sheet, I don't want to get too in the weeds on basic accounting, but in the balance sheet, I should see the money that's in my bank. And I should also see um, my inventory asset, which is my total um, inventory that I own. I have total assets of $485. Uh, so far, I have not... Um, uh, spent that much money. We're, we're, we're not uh, way in the hole, but we haven't really made much money. Let's go ahead and enter some uh, transactions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter some sales. So I'm going to go to new and let's assume that someone's paying me in cash. I'm selling this, let's say a couple of days later. So I'm going to go to new and then I'm going to go to sales receipt. So sales receipt would be an invoice and a payment combined. You would do an invoice if they're going to pay you in the future. You do a sales receipt if they pay you immediately. So let's say I have a new customer. Her name is Mary Roberts. And she, let me click on save, and she is going to buy the shoes from me. So I'm going to go to product and service. I'm going to put here MJ uh, Air 1998, and I'm going to sell this for 85 bucks. Okay. I'm not dealing with sales tax right now at the moment, but I'm going to show you one transaction 
we still stack a little bit in the future. Um, or actually, soon. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put that and let's say, where did the fifth eighty-eight dollars, the eighty-five dollars come in? To I'm gonna say they came into petty cash because the money didn't go straight into the bank. So I'm gonna put petty cash and let's say that happened on the next weekend, on the ninth, where we went uh, to a place to sell it. On the payment method, we're gonna put uh, let's just put cash in there. That should be good enough. Um, some of the things that could be interesting that you could think at this point is, you know, do I want to track where I'm selling these things? Maybe a particular flea market or a particular venue. You can do that with tags. It's really cool. We can click here as tags. We can go to manage tags. And then we can uh, create a tag group called uh, location or venue, something like that. Let's do venue. That might be actually a better one to use. And then I'll click on save. And then I'll create a tag for Miami flea market. Okay, I misspelled that, but that's okay. And then let's say I'm also going to do um, my backyard. <laughs> So let's say, for example, sometimes I sell things in my backyard. So I'll create two venues per se, my backyard and the Miami flea market. And then I'm going to click on uh, save. So now I have two tags that I can use to track my sales. I'll click on done and I can close that out. And now in here, I can go to Miami flea market and I know exactly where I sold it. So I can run reports of sales by venue, which is actually a really cool um, thing that you can do with tags in QuickBooks Online. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, save and close. And let's say I'm also going to sell some of the baseball cards. So I'm going to go to new and then I'm going to do uh, invoice. Let's say the customer promised to pay me in the future. Let's just say that's what it is. So I'm going to create a new customer here. Let's say that's Stephen Marks. Okay. So Stephen Marks is my new customer. And then I'm going to sell them some of the baseball cards. I'll type here baseball cards. Since it's not an inventory part, I don't have a lot of details. I'm going to put here, um, let's say I'm going to put the name of the player. So I'm going to put here Bo Diaz, which is one particular player. And let's say I sold one of the cards for $90. So woof, we're making a lot of money on this. I mean, we pay like $2 a pop. We're able to make some money on this. It's going to show in my profitability report. Let me go ahead and click on uh, save a new and I'm also going to sell let's say uh, the George Orwell book. so I'm going to go to new here I'm going to go to add new let's say I have another customer let's say this is um, Donald read and then we'll click on save okay I misspelled Ronald but that's okay and um, and I forgot to put a tag so let's say this is going to be the, my backyard so I'll go back to the transaction and put my backyard and we said we're going to sell the book, right? The, um, the George Orwell book. So we're going to sell that one for five bucks. I said we had to get rid of it because, you know, when we couldn't sell it for any more, we made a mistake. We didn't make any money on that deal. That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. And I'm going to go back and fix that other transaction that I didn't put a tag in, Stephen Marks. I'm going to select that one. And then I'm going to go into tags and put my backyard just so I can, again, this is optional. You don't have to. Uh, track your venues, but if you want to run reports on that, you're going to want to do that. Then I'm going to click on save and close. So now I'll be able to run uh, different type of reports. Notice that I have $85 in my uh, petty cash account. Th that was the 85 bucks that I got paid in cash. And then we have a customer that's promised to pay us $95 in the future. That's what the invoice is. So I can sell the product, but I haven't gotten paid yet. So you kind of see all the angles there. So I'm going to go back into reports and I'm going to look at my inventory valuation report to see what I have left. I should have um, nothing in stock really. Actually, okay, I do. I have the baseball book in stock. That's the only inventory that I have. I sold the other two items. I'm going to go back into the report and show you one more thing. I'm going to do sales by product and service summary. Another really cool report. Here, I'm going to do all dates and click on run report. So we get to see all the things that we sold. Okay, we sold um, some baseball cards, one for $90. Notice that there's no cost or profit because when you do non-inventory, you don't know, you don't have um, profit by item, which is a particular reason why I think even if you have a very small reseller shop, you should track inventory. You should use QuickBooks Online Advance so you can know which products you're making money on. Look, I lost money on the George Orwell book, but I made some money on the shoes and I can actually collapse 
the categories. And if I had a whole bunch of transactions, I can know what my profit per category is. That's a pretty awesome thing. Lastly, I'm going to go to reports and then I'm going to type here tag so we can get our profit and loss by tag. And in a profit and loss by tag report, I can click here where it says display columns by and I'm going to select venue and click on run report. Now I get to see my sales by venue. So I have $85 in the Miami flea market and $95 from my backyard, including the cost of each one. So that's a really, really sort of in-depth um, concept you can look at. Uh, before we wrap up, I'm just going to do a quick concept on sales tax. Let's start with sales tax purchase. So I'm going to go to new and then I'm going to go to bill. Let's say I'm going to buy some product, but I'm going to pay it in the future. So under vendor, I'm just going to put here eBay. Let's say I bought something at eBay and, um, and I'm going to pay it next week or whatever. Um, that might not be the best example, but I'm just going to put that in there. And then here on the item, I'm going to, let's say I'm going to create another item. Let's say I'm going to buy some, uh, some special, let's say some special beer bottles, some collectible beer bottles. So I'm going to put here uh, 2005 um, Oktoberfest special edition. Okay, So I'm buying some special edition Oktoberfest beers. I'm just making these things up. I'm going to go to inventory and then under category, I'm going to put here, let's say drinks, because we want to have a drinks category. And under quantity, we're going to put zero. As of date, again, 01, 01, 2021. And then reorder point zero. We're skipping the descriptions. Always welcome to do those. I'm going to click on save and close. And let's say I'm going to buy 10 of these bottles for, uh, let's say, $5 a pop, but they're going to charge us 7% sales tax. So the way it works with sales tax is you include it in the price of the product. So let's say that's going to be uh, 50 times 1.07. Hit tab is going to be $53.50. I'm just going to add the amount there and it will change the rate per product. So even though I paid $5 per unit, uh, including sales tax, it's $5.35. My cost should include uh, the sales tax. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. Let's say I'm going to pay that later in the future. And, um, and now I'm going to, let's say I'm going to sell a couple of them. So I'm going to go to uh, new. I'm going to go to sales receipt. And let me pick, let's say Mary Roberts came back and bought more stuff from us. Let's say this happened on the 11th and they pay and she paid me cash into my petty cash account. And she bought some of this 2005 Oktoberfest special edition. I sold her three, four, ten dollars a pop. And also, let's say I negotiated with her that I sold it three for ten bucks a pop and then two for five dollars a pop each. So you can split it like that or do whatever the calculation is per unit. It's really up to you how you want to do it. You can split it up if you want to, uh, if, if you want to see two separate lines. So you would enter the sales receipt like that. Then I'm going to click on save and close. Then I'm going to go back and because I did forget to put the tag on that. Let me go back and go to that transaction. And again, you don't have to use tags. I'm doing this because I want to know where I'm selling these things. Then I'm going to go back to the save and close. Then I'm going to go to reports and let me go to tag, profit and loss by tag. Now I have more. Let me do um, uh, change on group tags to venue. It's a really important piece. Click on run report. Now I get to see my sales. I'm selling more stuff in the Miami flea market. Again, up to you how you want to use tags. I'm just giving you one simple example. Let me go back into reports and let me do sales by product or service summary. Let me do all dates up here in the report. Click on run report and then we get to see our gross margin in our Oktoberfest drinks as well. Oof, okay, so that should be enough. I, didn't, I don't want to make this a lot longer, but I do want to uh, point out that there are additional resources that you definitely want to check out. So in the last of my slides, I put five videos from my YouTube channel that I recommend that you watch. Uh, there's about two to three hours worth of video watching there. So if you want to get really deep into QuickBooks Online, understand accounting, consequences of that, downloading transactions to the bank, getting deeper into inventory, workflow, chart of accounts, dealing with cash expenses, 
All these things are covered through these uh, five videos I put in there. And you can check out my YouTube channel. There's going to be tons of resources there. And of course, if you want to send me an email directly, my email is going to be hector at garciacpa.com. Hector at garciacpa.com. Don't forget to download the slides. And if you, if you set up a Quick Post Online account, use the link in the slides to help me with my affiliate as well. Thank you very much. And I'll see you on the next one.